Steve Avila is the 70th ranked player on my big board and my 12th ranked offensive lineman in the draft. He is a red shirt senior coming out of Texas Christian University with 30 plus games of experience and he was a back-to-back All-American in the 2021 and 2022 season. He was also elected a team captain for TCU in 2022. He had seven starts at center in 2022 before making two starts at right tackle. Then in 2021, he had 11 starts at center, and in 2022, he played all of his games at left guard. He is 6'4", which is 30th percentile, 332 pounds, which is 89th percentile. He will be 23 and a half years old on draft night, and overall he had an 8.51 relative athletic score. On his career, on 540 pass blocking snaps in 2022, he allowed only two hits and nine hurries with zero sacks. Avila is aggressive as a run blocker, and he uses his plus size to create displacement in the trenches. He also anchors really well against interior power rushers. He's versatile and he could start games for you at center or at guard, although I don't think that you would want to put him at offensive tackle. As for his weaknesses, he has limited lateral mobility and that makes engaging speed rushers more problematic for him, as well as dealing with loopers on stunts and uh, twists. I think he recognizes those a little bit late in the game, and then he's too slow to be able to get out there and get hands on them. He's also stiff in his lower body, um, and that causes some of those mobility issues, and he's probably not a great fit for his own running scheme because of that. He also has very small hands at 7th percentile. I think he projects well to the next level as a developmental backup interior offensive lineman. He's a guy who can be the backup for you at both guard spots and potentially the center spot as well due to his versatility, which will make him valuable to a team on day two. Tank Bigsby is the 69th ranked player on my big board and my fourth ranked running back in this class. He is a four-star recruit coming out of high school, and he had a track background where he was a long jumper and a sprinter. In 2020, he was the SEC Freshman of the Year. He is 5'11", 210 pounds, and ran a 4'5", 40, which isn't the fastest at 40th percentile, but his 10-yard split was a 1.54, which was 70th percentile, and overall he had an 8.31 relative athletic score. In 2022, he had 970 yards on 5.4 yards per carry and 10 touchdowns. He also had it 180 yards through the air on 30 receptions. He had the seventh most rushing yards after contact per attempt in 2022 at 4.2 yards per contact. Bigsby is a north-south runner who almost always falls forward. He is a powerful runner. But that's not the only thing that he can do. He also cuts well. He's got good lateral agility, and he makes defenders miss. Now, he does have average top-end speed, as you see from his 40-yard dash time, but he hits that top speed fast, which we can see on his 10-yard split. So he accelerates to that top speed fast. As for his weaknesses, he wasn't given a lot of opportunities in the passing game at Auburn, so it's unclear how he would be as a three-down back. He didn't get to block a lot. He didn't get a lot of opportunities to receive the ball. And so that's an unknown projection. He also runs too upright at times and is susceptible to being cut down at the legs. And then he's inconsistent game to game. He will play lights out one week and then he'll play poorly the next week. And so he runs a little bit hot and cold. I think he projects to the next level as a guy that can fit in really any kind of a scheme, a zone scheme, a gap scheme. I think he could do either one as long as you're not relying too much on his third down ability early in his career. Luke Musgrave is the 68th ranked player on my big board and my tight end four in the class. He was a three-star prospect coming out of high school who was a competitive slalom skier lacrosse player and a track standout in high school unfortunately he only played two games in 2022 due to a knee injury his uncle bill musgrave was an nfl quarterback and currently a cleveland browns offensive assistant musgrave is 6'6 253 pounds 
He had an 88th percentile 40-yard dash, 93rd percentile broad jump, and an 82nd percentile vertical. Overall, he had a 9.77 relative athletic score. In 2021, when he played more of the season, he had 22 receptions for 304 yards, 13.8 yards per reception, and one touchdown. Musgrave is an athletic, fluid mover, and he has reliable hands and he tracks the ball well in the passing game. I think he especially excels at threatening up the seam or running over routes where he can run away from linebackers or he can settle into soft spots in the zone. Also, I think he sells blocks on play action releases really well. He does a good job of getting hands on a linebacker or a lineman before he releases into the flats or up the seam. As for his weaknesses, he has to build up to his top speed, and I thought he could be out physical at the line of scrimmage at times, and that prevented his release and his speed buildup. He also doesn't snap off routes very well. That's one of the reasons he's so good up the seam or on these over routes where he can just outrun guys because his breaks aren't very good in his routes. I think he also has below average play strength that shows up as a blocker. He can seal off defenders, but he doesn't really generate displacement in the running game. And on top of that, he only started 13 games in college, so he's fairly raw in his development. I think his scheme fit is as a wide tight end in a vertical scheme. This is not a guy you want to line up and line a lot. It's not someone that you want to ask to block a lot, and he's not someone that you want to try to snap off a lot of routes. You want to let him use his long speed to run long developing routes downfield. Noah Sewell is the 67th ranked player on my big board and my 4th ranked linebacker in this class. He was a 5 star recruit coming out of high school and he has NFL bloodlines in his family. He is the brother of Detroit Lions offensive tackle Panay Sewell. He was Pac-12 defensive freshman of the year in 2020, first team all conference in 2021 and second team all conference in 2022. He is 6'2", 246 pounds, and ran a 4'6", 40-yard dash with a 1.57 10-yard split. He also had 27 reps on the bench, which is 87th percentile. Overall, his relative athletic score is an 8.32. Suell recorded 56 tackles, 5.5 tackles for loss, 1.5 sacks, 1 interception, 4 passes defensed, and 1 fumble recovery in 2022. Suell is a high motor player who is always around the football. He's also highly aggressive. He thrives when he gets to trigger downhill against the run. He does a really good job of displacing blockers in the running game, and he's able to muddy up and clog up the middle of the field and force runs outside. He also has really good pass rush skills. He has good snap timing. He gets off the ball quickly, and he can rush with power off of the edge. He's a big hitter. And he's, there's big collisions at the catch point on tape all over for him. And he's a decent player in coverage as well. I would consider his coverage one of the strengths of his game. As for his weaknesses, he sort of has a lumbering change of direction ability. And unfortunately, that negates a lot of his straight line speed when he's asked to play in space. He also doesn't wrap up ball carriers. He goes for those big hits, and sometimes those pay off with fumbles and with you know demoralizing hits, but other times it leads to broken tackles. And he can struggle in coverage at times as well. It's, he's, he has good eyes in zone coverage, but he's slow to react at times, and he struggles to stick with tight ends and man-to-man. I think Suell fits best in the NFL as a Mike linebacker in a blitz-heavy scheme who will use his pass-rushing ability early and often. Darnell Wright is the 66th ranked player on my big board and my 11th ranked offensive lineman in this draft class. He was a five-star recruit coming out of high school who started at right tackle in 2019 and 2020 before moving to left tackle in 2021 and then back to the right side in 2022. He is 6'5", 333 pounds, which is 89th percentile weight. He has first percentile hand size, 90th percentile 40-yard dash times, a 94th percentile broad jump, and overall a 9.67 relative athletic score. In 2022, he didn't allow a single sack and allowed only a 1.7% pressure rate behind only Dewan Jones and Peter Skoronsky among Power 5 offensive tackles. 
when you watch right on tape, the first thing that jumps out is just his strength. He is incredibly strong. And he has a very stout anchor and pass protection. This is not someone you can bull rush off of the edge. You can't win power rushing against Darnell Wright. He does a good job of using his length to keep edge rushers at bay. And he has near perfect hand technique that helps makes up for his first percentile hands. However, he's not the most fluid mover in space. I think his feet are a little slow on his kicks and sometimes he struggles to get good depth out of his pass sets and so that opens him up to pass rushers off of the edge that want to rush with speed and are able to dip around the horn on him. He sometimes bends at his waist instead of his knees when engaged and that gets him top heavy where speed rushers can get to the outside, he'll bend and then they can grab and they can shed off of him. I do wonder if Wright could be a candidate to move to offensive guard where his footwork issues wouldn't be as big of a deal and his power could really shine. Now, if you're taking Darnell Wright early in this draft, you're probably hoping that he will stick on the outside. However, I do think offensive guard is a decent backup plan if he fails to thrive on the edge. Matthew Bergeron is the 65th ranked player on my big board and my 10th ranked offensive lineman in this class. He started his career at right tackle in 2019 when he became the first true freshman to start for Syracuse in 20 years. Later, he moved to left tackle in 2020. He is 6'5", 318 pounds, and notched an 8.73 relative athletic score. And he is an older prospect. He will be 23 years old on draft night. He is a very athletic mover. He's smooth in every aspect of his game. And he's got really good range in the run game. Syracuse love to get him to the second level to engage linebackers and safeties to spring big runs. Now, as good as his technique is in the run game, and it is very good, he does have poor technique in the passing game that we'll get to in just a moment. But the best part of what he does in the passing game is he has really good awareness in pass protection. He passes off stunts really well. I do think this is another guy who could potentially transition to offensive guard at the NFL level. As for his weaknesses, he has inconsistent hand strikes in both placement and timing. A lot of times his punches are off uh, placement or they're mistimed and it causes struggles in pass protection. A lot of times he misses the punch altogether or it's just late and he allows edge rushers to get into his chest. He also has a lack of functional strength. Now at the collegiate level, he made up for it, especially in the running game with his technique, which is very, very good, but he is going to need to put on strength at the next level to be able to hang with NFL edge rushers. I think Bergeron is another player that has some offensive tackle, offensive guard versatility, even though he never played offensive guard for Syracuse. I think a team should take him just to be a solid backup potentially at even four of the five spots on the offensive line, and you can hope that he develops into an eventual starter. Mazzy Smith is the number 64 player on my big board and my sixth ranked interior defensive lineman in this class. He was a four-star recruit coming out of high school, and he didn't really play for Michigan until his junior year when he became a starter. He is 6'3", 323 pounds, which is 87th percentile weight. His 34 reps on the bench put him in the 88th percentile, and he has 70th percentile arm length. In 2022, he had 48 tackles, 2.5 tackles for loss, a half a sack, one forced fumble, one fumble recovery, and 25 pressures. He was also top 10 in PFF's stops metric. When you watch Mazzy Smith play, what jumps out at you is that he is powerful. He is heavy and strong, and he's near impossible to move in the running game. He routinely would drop anchors against double teams in the middle of the Michigan defense and even displace du double teams into running lanes. He's also shown improvements from 2021 to 2022 as a pass rusher, although he has a lot of work left to go there. His, as for his weaknesses, he is inconsistent play to play. Uh, he gets too upright and he gets sealed out of plays at times. There's also, you know, some things with his motor. He's a little hot and cold at times. It's like he will engage the guy and realize it's not a run and he just stands there. He won't get off of his blocks at times. 
He's also slow off of the snap. At times he doesn't really explode out of his stance. He relies on his strength to win when he's late to plays. And he is very much a work in progress as a pass rusher. Without development in that area, he is only ever going to be a two down player in the NFL. But on those two downs, he's going to eliminate runs up the middle almost entirely. I think he projects best as a run stuffing zero technique, a nose tackle in an odd front scheme. And you probably shouldn't rely on him developing as a pass rusher, but if he does, it would be icing on the cake for a very good run stuffer. DJ Turner is the 63rd overall player on my big board and the 15th ranked defensive back in this class. He was a four-star recruit who primarily played special teams in his first two seasons at Michigan before earning more playing time in 2021. He is 5'11", 178 pounds, which is 5th percentile weight, but he ran a 42640, which is 99th percentile. He had a 96th percentile 10-yard split and overall had a 9.59 relative athletic score. In 2022, he notched 36 tackles, one tackle for loss, one interception, 10 passes defensed, and one fumble recovery. Turner is an explosive athlete. He has high-end speed, he accelerates quickly, and he has quick feet and smooth transitions. He is extremely sticky in man coverage because nobody can run away from him. He can hang with any receiver in the game. In zone, he does a really good job of squeezing routes, and he does a good job of baiting quarterbacks into throws and then triggering and closing on those routes fast. He's got a great motor, he clicks and closes downhill really well, and he's not afraid to stick his nose in the fan and tackle despite his relatively small frame. As for his weaknesses, he does struggle against bigger wide receivers who win with strength instead of athleticism. He's not a guy that wants to press you at the line of scrimmage and play that physical game. He wants to play finesse and he wants to stick with you in and out of your routes. And so if you can body him up, you're putting him at a disadvantage. And he also really struggles to shed blocks, which makes him a tough projection to slot corner at the next level if he can't get off of those blocks. Although he is difficult to square up. He does a good job of using his athleticism to get around blocks and not be hit solid. I think he projects best to the next level as a man coverage corner specialist, probably playing outside until he can add some strength, but then he's probably a guy that you can kick into the slot as well to cover the shiftier slot receivers that you'll find in the NFL. Tyreek Stevenson is the 62nd overall player on my big board and my 14th ranked defensive back in this class. He was a four-star recruit coming out of high school who enrolled at Georgia and later transferred to Miami where he earned all ACC honorable mention honors in 2021. He is six feet tall, 198 pounds, ran a 4.4540 yard dash, which is 64th percentile, had a 38.5 inch vertical, which is 79th percentile, and overall had an 8.89 relative athletic score, which was actually brought down by his slow shuttle and three cone times. In 2022, he had 25 tackles, two interceptions, and seven passes defensed. He is a big, physical, strong corner, and he loves to press guys at the line of scrimmage. He's also really good at contesting the ball at the catch point. He makes plays on the ball. He will rake at the, def at the receiver's arms, whatever he has to do to make a play. He's also a physical tackler, but he does struggle to bring guys down in the open field when there's space to work with. A lot of that is due to his bad lateral agility. He's not the best athlete. His, his RAS score is really good, but a lot of his athleticism gets sapped by his transitions, his agility. He's got slow transitions, and although his speed is good, it's not elite, he struggles in off-man coverage because he's so slow to trigger and so slow to make his cuts. In zone coverage, he's unsure of his responsibilities, and he does bust quite frequently. He's also weak as an open field tackler, and he just doesn't do a very good job setting the edge in the run. And he's a poor punt returner. That He was tried there at Miami. It just didn't work out very good. So he's not bringing you special teams value. I think Tyreek Stevenson 
fits well as a press man corner in a scheme that's going to ask him to do that a lot. If he can get physical at the line of scrimmage, knock off your timing, and then sink into trail technique, that's going to be using him uh, in, in his best setting. And so that's what a team that's going to draft Tyreek Stevenson should look to do. Joe Tipman is the 61st ranked player on my big board and my 9th ranked offensive lineman in this draft class. He was a three-star recruit coming out of high school, and he barely played his second year before taking over in 2021 as Wisconsin's center. He is 6'6", which is 97th percentile, 313 pounds, which is 88th percentile. He has 97th percentile hand size and 80th percentile wingspan. He'll be just under 22 years old on draft night. He allowed only one sack in two years as a starter at Wisconsin. He is very strong and athletic in his run blocking. Uh, He can execute double teams with offensive guards. Uh, He can snap and pull out to the edge, and he can even execute reach blocks where he snaps the ball and jumps across the face of defensive tackles to seal them off on the backside of plays. It's a very difficult move, but he can pull it off. He's also very reliable in pass protection. He's always got his head on a swivel looking for incoming blitzers. Uh, He does a good job of passing off loopers to offensive guard. He can mirror defenders really well, and he does a good job of setting protections at the line of scrimmage. As for his weaknesses, he is much taller than average for a center, and that does cause him leverage issues from time to time. He can get out leveraged by smaller opponents who get up under him into his chest and into his pads, and he can lose reps before they really start. And so to combat that, he likes to get hands on defenders first, but he sometimes struggles with the balance of lunging at defenders to get hands on first or being late to his punch, which does allow them to get into his pads and dictate the rep. I think that he is a good center prospect who has pretty good technique. He's pretty reliable, but there's some rawness to his game that could be refined particularly in his punch timings and if he can smooth that out he could be a force in the middle of an offensive line for a team for years to come and that wraps up this video ranking the number 61 through 70 players on my big board if you enjoyed this video please consider subscribing to me on youtube at shane half nfl you can also follow me on twitter at half and half underscore tpl and check out my podcast chalk talk that covers the entire nfl including everything you need to know leading up to draft night